guys, Sarah here. So today I'm actually going to be showing you my adults, not all of them because uh, I do not have enough time right now to show you all of my adults, but I'm going to show you a few of them. This is going to be a little bit different. As you can tell, I, am, I have this brown background instead, uh, and I actually don't have a light box to work with that's big enough for my adults. So uh, since it's daylight right now, I'm actually going to just kind of put them in a tub and show them to you guys. I'll have to hold the camera with one hand and the snake with the other, but uh, you guys will at least get to see them. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know, again, that between now and the end of the year, I still have the 30% uh, off of any physical product on my website. So that's TD30, it stands for tie-dye 30. So like I said, that's 30% off and I have tie-dye shirts that are custom to whatever color you want. So if you want a snake shirt that is tie-dyed, whatever color you want, uh, just check out with whatever size that you need and then send me an email and let me know what colors you want it to be. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the video with the adults now. Okay, so this is the first boy that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, he is a quite of a, a mouthful of a snake uh, as far as his gene mutations go. He was sold as an Ultramel Anery Hypoberry Motley from Tequila Sunrise Lines. Uh, and as you can see, he has quite a lot of uh, high saturation on him. I haven't proven out his uh, genetics quite yet. He's a very, um, just... I don't want to say he's an unhappy snake. He's just an uncomfortable snake in general. He's uncomfortable everywhere all the time. It doesn't matter where he is or what he's doing. He's not comfortable. It doesn't even matter if he's resting in his enclosure. I have tried many, many things to try to make him comfortable. I've tried different substrates. I've tried different hides. I've tried multiple different types of enclosures. And he's just a generally just uncomfortable snake. Uh, he never stops moving and he just does not like anything. But... Uh, that's part of the reason that I got him out first was so I could kind of get him, um, you know, finished and done and uh, not have to worry about him again as far as, like, showing him off because I know he's stressed out. Uh, but either way, uh, I think he's a really beautiful snake. He does have some sort of paradox checkers going on. I don't know if you can see those. Uh, most Motleys, of course, would have no checkers, but the Ultramel corn snakes, a lot of times they... Uh, they, they just have a higher likelihood of getting checkers when they're motleys, even though they shouldn't have checkers. Uh, and a lot of people think that's because of the hybrid origins of the Ultra gene mutation. Uh, so his, this guy's name is Giovanni, and the reason I named him Giovanni is because I uh, originally got him to put with my ghosts. Uh, I bought two uh, ghosts last year, and I'll probably get them out and show them to you guys. They ended up not being ghosts, but that's beside the point. Um, I named him Giovanni because I had a Casanova theme for my ghosts, and uh, Casanova was a movie with Heath Ledger, um, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time, and uh, Giovanni was a uh, the name of one of the characters in that movie, so that is why his name is Giovanni. I know probably a lot of millennials were hoping that it's because of Pokemon, but it's not. <laughs> Either way, um, there's Giovanni. I'm going to go ahead and put him back and uh, so he's not miserable anymore, but I thought I would show him to you guys. Alright, this is Francesca. She is the female that was sold to me as a Ghost Blood Red Motley. And uh, it turns out that she is not a Ghost Blood Red Motley, or at least so we believe now. Uh, she is obviously a motley, and she's some kind of anery type, but we're not 100% sure. A couple people have said that she might be a blue, which is dilute in anery, and that's why she looks very ghost. For now, though, we're just calling her a uh, anery hurricane motley. Uh, as you can see, she does have some interesting-looking hurricane-type pattern on her. Uh, she is a very sweet snake. I like her a lot, and uh, she's gaining a lot of good weight for me. Um, whoop. And she will be, of course, breeding next year. Uh, and again, Francesca was a, another character in the Casanova movie. And so that is why her name is Francesca. Uh, and I'll just kind of get a little bit close up so you guys can see her. She is a really pretty snake. I really do like her, her coloring and her pattern a lot. All right, here is the man of the hour. This is Casanova. He was the one who was sold as a ghost blood red motley to me. And he might be a ghost. Uh, he's definitely motley. I don't think he's blood red. Um, I bred him with a female that was het blood red this year. 
and no blood reds were produced. But there's his belly and his sides. Uh, it is um, understandable why someone would look at him and think he's a ghost blood red motley, but uh, he is not. He's not at least some of those things. He might be a ghost when I bred him to that same female uh, that is het for blood red, or het for diffuse, I should say. Uh, she's also het for ghost, and uh, which is hypo and anery. And I did get at least one ghost out of that clutch. So he might be a ghost, or he might be het hypo. Not 100% sure what's going on with him. But either way, he is a really pretty snake, and I do plan to keep him. Uh, for the projects, but not 100% sure where I'm going to fit him into the projects right now. When I bred him to Francesca, though, I got some really cool stripes out of that clutch, so I'll probably repeat that breeding next year. Uh, I really liked the way it turned out, and he's got a lot of really cool yellow. Like, you can still see it going all the way down his sides here. So, yeah, he's a really pretty snake. I like him a lot. As far as personality goes, uh, he, he loves food. Um... Last week he thought I was food, and he bit down on me so hard that he lost a tooth in me. And um, I had to literally, like, cut myself open to get the tooth out, which, you know, most people would probably go to the doctor at that point, but I'm just hardcore like that, I guess. So there is Mr. Casanova. Uh, expect him to be the father of at least a few clutches next year. Now I know at least a few of you are excited about the yellow snows, the halo, and the green blotched for next year. This is Mr. Frangapani. Uh, he's not too socialized, but he's generally a very sweet snake. He's kind of just very mobile right now. Uh, he is a halo. I know that he looks like a green blotched. He's actually kind of in shed right now, so his colors are not as contrasting as they normally would be. But you can definitely see in like these two saddles here, uh, or at least I can tell in in this one, that uh, there is pink between the yellow and that means he is a halo, not a green blotched. But uh, there he is. I hatched him in 2017 and he's just always been a really good feeder and a good snake and he is the father of a lot of the halos and green blotch that you'll see in my collection. And I expect him to father a few next year as well. Uh, as some of you may know, I uh, have been doing a lot of trials on Halo and Green Blotch since I started breeding back in 2011. And um, I believe that I've proven it to be either dominant or incomplete dominant, something like that. It is definitely inheritable uh, somehow. I don't think it's just selectively bred. So there, anyway, there's Frangapani. Maybe. <laughs> Come here, bud. Let's... I'm going to see if I can get a good, oh, there we go, a kind of more full body shot of him for you guys. He's a very good boy. I like him a lot. He always eats. He's one of the few that eats Reptilinks for me without question. So, uh, and he's also het for caramel and motley, but before you ask, no, I do not believe that the het caramel is causing his yellow. I know that that's a question a lot of people ask, but... The answer is no. Um, I've had a lot of het caramels that did not cause halo or green blotched, and I've had green blotched and halos that were not het caramel. So just sort of mentioning that as an aside. All right, uh, I am here now with uh, Marigold, who is the sister of Frangapani, also hatched in 2017, same clutch. Um, I She's obviously also uh, yellow, but she's a green blotched snow instead of a halo. Uh, she's never had any of that like pink in between the yellow anywhere. She's just straight up yellow. She has a tiny itty bitty bit of pink like on her head you might be able to see. But otherwise, otherwise she doesn't have any pink on her body anywhere. She's just this yellow and white. So she's definitely a green blotched with all this yellow. Uh, she has a slightly different body type than him. I don't know if you can tell but she's a little bit... Um, She's a little chunkier and a little bit shorter, uh, so she just holds her weight slightly differently than he does. Um, he's a little bit longer and more slender, uh, and she's just shorter and fatter. It happens, uh, you know, snakes vary just as much as people do as far as their body types, but I do have to be careful about how much I feed her. You can probably tell she's kind of chunky uh, in her back end, not so much that she's getting, like, hippy. You might see sometimes, like, they call them hips where... Some snakes will get fat deposits that form around their tail, and uh, she doesn't have those, thankfully. 
Um, but I really do have to work to make sure that she doesn't get those because her body type is just such that it likes to store fat, which I can relate to that. I totally understand. So I just have to be careful about what I feed her and how much. Uh, she's another one who also really loves to eat Reptilinks for me, so I never have to worry about that. I can't recall off the top of my head if I have ever fed her, or not fed her, bred her to uh, Frangapani, who's her brother. I don't typically like to breed siblings together, but uh, sometimes I will just to see what uh, gene mutations are hidden in there. Um, I have bred her to a known het, Carmel and Motley before, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, Carmel does not necessarily, like a het Carmel does not mean that the snake is going to be yellow, and she's a great example of that. Uh, no matter how many times I've bred her to a visual or het Carmel, she has not produced any caramel offspring, so I do not believe that she's het caramel, even though she is very, very yellow. Uh, one thing that I do love about her, obviously, is this really cool pattern area right here. Um, she's just got some really cool aberrant pattern going on with her, even up by her head, which I would normally think that she's het motley with that sort of uh, weird almost motley pattern at the front, but she's not het motley as far as I can tell. I've bred her to a few motley and or het motleys and she's never produced motleys but she is a really gorgeous gorgeous snake like she's just got all this yellow on her and i just absolutely love her and she is probably one of the most docile snakes that i have she just is a joy to work with and a joy to be around and i i've just i've loved her since the day that she hatched i don't know she's just always one that i I just, I, I don't know, I hold her close to my heart. Her and her brother were the son of my original Halo Snow male, and he passed away not that long ago. He had cancer. Um, he started getting uh, these tumors on him, and he had to be put down, so uh, that really sucked, and so it's just really nice to have two snakes from him that, uh, you know, I hope to keep for life. So there she is. The next girl in line, this is Miranda. Uh, she is an Ultramel Creamsicko Okatee. And you can see she definitely has those thick borders of that Okatee. She's in shed right now. Uh, because of her MRI uh, heritage, she's a little bit oddly patterned, a little bit oddly colored. And she also has a little bit more of an attitude. Uh, so either way, she's a gorgeous snake and I absolutely love her. She was a purchase. I got her... I want to say not last year, but the year before, or maybe even the year before that, as a sub-adult. Um, she was um, like two years old when I got her, and I think she's going to turn four next year. And uh, she has produced one clutch for me. Absolutely gorgeous babies, gorgeous snake. I just love her to death. I found out this year that she's het annery, and so that was really nice to find out. I was hoping that she was het for caramel and or motley, just because I have a lot of that in my collection, but she's not, and that's okay. I definitely plan to keep her in my collection long term, because uh, she's absolutely gorgeous, and she gives me great babies. Um, and yeah, I just think that she's, she's absolutely beautiful. I love her to death, and her pattern and colors are just really cool and really unique. And she's very curious. She's a very sweet girl. One of her weird quirks, though, is that she always sits in her water bowl. Always. All the time. Whether she's in shed or not. And I have checked her for mites. Like, I even treated her for mites at some point and didn't, like, I didn't see any. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to treat for mites just in case it's something that I can't see. And I haven't seen a mite anywhere. Uh, I haven't seen any any indication of why she would sit in her water bowl. I tried to even put her on the cooler side of the um, room so that I thought maybe she was too hot and that's why she was sitting in her water bowl. But nope, um, that's just her favorite hide, I guess. So I actually gave her a an empty water bowl to hide in as a hide because she wasn't using her hide. Uh, I gave her an empty water bowl to hide in and um, then I gave her like a separate sort of jar that has water in it. Uh, and so she'll drink out of the jar and she hides in her water bowl. I don't know. Don't ask me, but at least we figured out how to make her comfortable. Okay, I think now we're on to the last two that I want to show you guys, at least for today. Like I said, I'm not going to have time to show you all of the snakes that I have. But this is Empanada. She is a possibly het golden female. Uh, she's the one that's been kind of producing a lot of my caramel and motleys from the last few years. Her and her brother, who this is, like I said, one of the few exceptions where I have been breeding siblings. 
I generally try to not breed siblings, like I said, but uh, this is kind of a special case because I am trying to continue the Golden Project. Uh, they have not produced any known Goldens yet, and they may never, but it's okay. I, I like the caramel motleys that I get from them. And as you can she see, she's very yellow overall. I talked to the guy that I that originally produced them, and he said that there is some like yellow factor or yellow jacket or whatever in the line, so that could be what's causing her yellow tint to her coloring. Uh, yellow factor slash yellow jacket has not been proven to be a mutation. Uh, it's not really accepted by the community yet. But uh, there's definitely something going on, and it's at least, uh, it's dominant or incomplete dominant, uh, because it definitely passes on in the first generation if you have a visual. So there she is. She's a very sweet girl, um, and she's my biggest female. Uh, I think that she might actually be my biggest corn in general right now. I don't typically feed my corn snakes uh, enough to get like super super big but I do feed my females bigger meals than my males because the males frankly don't need it uh, but yeah she's my biggest female right now um, and she does have I don't know if you've noticed come here girl right here she has a little tiny scar uh, you can barely see it now but a uh, little tiny itty bitty scar right there from a time when she uh, tried to escape her enclosure and she kind of got scratched there uh, and it left a scar but it doesn't seem to bother her anymore look at her such a sweet girl she's so beautiful I absolutely love her and I think that no matter what she's always going to be a part of the collection I know that she's just a normal to most people who look at her like who just wants a normal heifer caramel and motley but she's she's just a sweet sweet girl I absolutely adore her all right, on to the last snake for today. This is Gelato. This is Empanada's brother and the sire to any of the caramel and motleys that are from the possibly het golden lines that I've been selling. Um, he is a very sweet boy. Uh, I, his personality is a little weird. He's one of those that really always, like no matter what I do, he makes his enclosure soaking wet. So like every other day I have to go in and completely clean out his enclosure or at least like, and I spot clean a few times a week anyway, but every time I go in, he's one of the messiest, messiest snakes that I have. And so he's just one that I always have to keep an eye on and make sure that his enclosure is pretty clean because otherwise he's just going to be living in the mess that he made by spilling his water bowl all the time. I did get him a water bowl that like is supposed to not spill as much, but he finds a way, man. He finds a way to make it difficult for me. Either way, beautiful snake. Uh, I, have, I really do love him and I love his personality. And he's one that I'll get out to show people if they just want a snake to look at or hold uh, anybody who comes over. He's just such a sweet boy. And he's never, he's never even bit me out of like thinking I was food. He's very smart, I feel. And um, I've had him so long that he just is another one that will always be in the collection no matter what. And again, he also has that very orangey yellow color to him. Uh, so, I don't know, love his coloring, love his pattern, love any genetic possibilities there, and just a sweet, sweet boy. So, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate everything that you do to support me. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the next few weeks. Uh, I think I might go back and redo some of my old videos to sort of update information and stuff like that. Uh, but again, either way, just remember I have 30% off on my website with the code TD30. I would really love if you'd get some tie-dye shirts. I think that would be a great Christmas gift for anybody who likes snakes. It doesn't have my logo on it. It just has the, my logo snake on it. So if you know someone who loves corn snakes, uh, I'm sure that they would love a shirt like that. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.